How harmful is Roundup to your soil? Now people are very concerned that when you spray Roundup, it gets into the soil and causes all kinds of problems. It kills the microbes, it kills plants. It stays in the soil a long time and you can't plant anything else in that soil because the Roundup will kill it. I wanted to design an experiment to see how long does that Roundup really stay in the soil and how much harm will it do to your soil? I have a pot here where I've been growing a dandelion and I'm gonna use this for my experiment. I'm gonna spray this with Roundup and kill it. And I'm going to plant Kentucky Wonder Beans around the outside. I'll plant a couple beans right away before I spray. See if the Roundup harms those. And then I'm gonna plant a couple beans every couple days around the outside. See which ones grow. Will they all grow or will they all die because of the Roundup in the soil? Time for an update on our Roundup experiment. I put in two bean seeds the same day I sprayed the dandelion. And then I put in two bean seeds every second day after that, going around the pot. Now you can see the dandelion is definitely dead. Roundup is absorbed by the leaves, taken into the root, and it kills the root. And that's why it works so well. So what happened to the two bean seeds I planted before I sprayed? Well, they started to germinate. I could see the little beans coming to the surface of the soil, but they never really grew. No leaves were produced, and eventually they just rotted. So the beans that were put in at the time of spraying didn't develop at all. The beans that were put in two days later are right here. You can see that they never really grew well. One did come out. The leaves are a bit deformed, and glyphosate will do that to the plant. The second one never really came out of the ground very well. By day six, we've got a pretty good looking plant. The leaves look quite normal. There's no sign that Roundup affected this bean. The new growth looks really good. It's starting to vine. Now this seedling has had something chew on it, but we can't blame that on the Roundup. Both of these seedlings look good, and that's two days after spraying the Roundup. After that, all the plants are healthy. The last ones that were put in are a little smaller, but these guys have been growing for almost a week ahead of this one, so that's no surprise either. All of these beans are healthy. How do we explain that? Roundup is supposed to be this very toxic material that kills everything. It kills all the plants in the soil. It kills the microbes in the soil. Well, a lot of that is just myth. Roundup works really well for killing plants if it's sprayed on actively growing leaves. If it's not sprayed on those leaves, it has very little effect on most plants. When glyphosate, the active ingredient of Roundup, hits soil, it binds to the soil. The soil sucks it up and holds it very tightly. And once that happens, the effect of glyphosate on other things in the soil is very minimal. The microbes in the soil are not really affected too much by the glyphosate. In fact, some bacteria actually eat the glyphosate and digest it. The half-life of glyphosate in soil is only about 30 to 60 days. What that means is that every month and a half, the amount in the soil reduces by half. Compared to other chemicals, it's fairly short-lasting in soil. Plants can absorb glyphosate through their root system. So if you have a larger existing plant and you spray the soil, the plant can absorb some of that glyphosate and it will affect the plant. It usually doesn't kill the plant because it doesn't absorb enough from the soil. The recommendation for planting seeds after spraying Roundup is that you should wait about a week. And this little experiment showed that a week would be plenty. Any seeds planted after that week will grow just fine. So what am I going to do with this little experiment? It's early enough in the summer that they should produce a pretty good crop. And I'm not worried at all about the glyphosate in the plant because looking at the leaves, there's almost none in the plant. If these bean seeds had absorbed glyphosate, you would see deformed leaves. We don't see that. We see normal plants here, which indicates they haven't absorbed the glyphosate. I know a lot of people hate Roundup and they hate Monsanto. And now since Bayer bought Monsanto, they hate Bayer. They think this is a terrible chemical. And you can have your own views about the company itself. 
But when it comes to looking at the facts about glyphosate, you have to conclude that it's actually an extremely safe chemical compared to many of the things we have. In fact, it's safer than many of the cleaners you have in your house. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating spraying glyphosate everywhere. In fact, I don't believe in spraying chemicals at all if you can help it. And that is either synthetic chemicals like Roundup or homemade chemicals that you get out of your kitchen. They're both chemicals and they all do some harm to the environment, to insects, to microbes. We need to start using them as little as possible. But I'm less concerned about Roundup. I'm more concerned about cans of spray material and the propellants that are in those. I don't use air fresheners for the same reason. Those chemicals in air fresheners and perfumes and all those disinfecting chemicals we have for the home, they all give off chemicals. You want to limit how much of all of those that you use. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. If you want to learn more about garden myths, have a look at my books called Garden Myths. Click on the picture of the book and that will take you to more information about the books. If you want to see more of my videos, click on the link in the top right hand corner. See you in the garden.